Hi, I'm Colin Williams, Senior Business Journalist for Insider Sport, and I'm delighted to be joined today with Andy Mitchell, the CEO of Serie A USA. Really looking forward to diving into a bunch of topics with Andy today involving Serie A's trajectory across the pond, as well as some of the commercial partnerships and deals Andy's team have helped to secure to grow the Italian Football League in the US market. Uh, but enough of me rambling on, Andy. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out to speak with me today. Firstly, uh, how's things? How are you doing? These are great. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful fall day here in New York. Nice and uh, nice and relatively cool compared to summer. So uh, excited to be here, and thanks for having us uh, and giving us a chance for uh, to talk about our business here in the U.S. for uh, Serie A. No, for sure, for sure. Thank you for your time. And uh, well, then um, speaking just in uh, in general about U.S. soccer at the moment. I mean, with Messi coming to the MLS last summer, the Copa America recently being held in the U.S. and as well with the 2026 FIFA World Cup on the horizon, is it fair to say that soccer in the U.S. is expected to explode in the coming years? And if so, what else would contribute uh, to this? I mean, it's really been great to see the growth of soccer over even the past few decades. Forget about you know the last year and the events. Obviously, those are huge, but the growth has been steady over the last few decades. I think, you know, given the events that you cited and working toward the World Cup, I think we've reached the hockey stick growth phase of uh, of hockey or of hockey of soccer here in the U.S. Um, and it's not just you know the big events for men. Youth youth uh, participation continues to grow. The women's sport at the professional level is growing very quickly here. You know, it's it's just amazing to see how pervasive women's soccer is now. Here in the U.S., um, and it's and also another thing that's really exciting is um, with youth. You know, soccer is the number two number two sport for youth here in America. So that just says to me that we're going to continue to grow. You know, over over decades. I think what if I look ahead to the to the World Cup, um, obviously there's going to be massive organic growth, and that's just going to happen. I think what as a soccer industry and for Serie A specifically, what we really need to focus on is retention. Right. So we've been in this moment before in the U.S probably at a different scale. But in 94, everybody thought that that was the moment that soccer was going to really take off. And what we saw is following the World Cup, we kind of sank back down to where we were previously. And so I think it's on me and it's on everybody else in the soccer industry to really think about how we drive retention following the World Cup. I mean, there, there's going to be some drop off, but we need to drop off at a level that's well above where we were in 2025. And they continue to grow from there. And I think we're all poised to do that. It's not just Serie A. A number of international leagues, clubs, MLS is growing. There's just a lot of investment in the sport here in the U.S. So I think we're really poised to take advantage of the World Cup as an opportunity for long-term, sustained, steady growth. Yeah, and as and from a UK perspective as well, I can I can see looking outside looking in. There's a lot of uh, a lot of more soccer coverage now uh, in the US, particularly Serie A as well, which obviously you preside over now over there in the US. How would you assess Serie A's standing at the moment in the US among some of the other top European leagues, such as the Premier League, La Liga, etc.? I mean, the great news is we have the wind at our backs at Serie A broadly, and obviously that carries over into the US. This season, we have five teams um, in the Champions League. We've earned that extra seat, which is amazing and really demonstrates how well the league is performing in European competitions, which obviously is incredibly important. Um, we have the top, Amer top American player in Christian Pulisic, as well as a number of other USMNT players. In fact, Serie A has the most uh, starters on the USMNT compared to any other league. And so that just draws a lot of organic attention here in Christian Pulisic as we see, is really thriving in Italy. It's really turned things around and it just continues to perform at an extremely high level you know, every week. Um, the thing also that's really exciting about Serie A is the unpredictability of the league, right? In some of the, some of the other leagues in Europe, it's the same one or two clubs who continues to, to perform and you know win every year. In Serie A, over the last five seasons, we've had four different champions. So a lot going on on the pitch, which is great. Um, we have some of the best, best known brands in football, AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juve, Roma, et cetera. And so, you know, we can, we can draw on those brands here in the U.S. to continue to grow the league. Um, and then we have an incredible advantage off the pitch, right? Americans have a special relationship with Italy. Um, we did some research recently. There are 51 million Americans that have affinity for Italy as a country and as a culture. So that gives us a great head start as a differentiator. And then 
there are about 3 million Americans that travel to Italy every year for holiday. And so creating that cultural connection between people's travels and the sport, I think is a big opportunity and some work that we are specifically embarking on. And so, you know, using Italy as a key differentiator, not just with consumers, but also in the commercial market gives us an advantage there as well. So um, I feel like, you know, in a lot of ways, given success in Europe and all the Americans, I'm extremely lucky to have kind of landed this role at the time that I did. And, you know, ex ex extraordinarily excited about the opportunity and the work ahead of us. Yeah. And speaking on some of those opportunities as well, Andy, and taking matters off the field, um, what commercial partnerships and relationships have uh, have Serie A in the USA engaged engaged in and to support its growth ambitions in not just America, but also North America as well? Yep, 100 percent. So we're responsible for um, Canada and Mexico in addition to, to the U.S., obviously, just given the scale of the country, we spend most of our time working in the U.S., but, you know, those other countries are incredibly important to us, you, you know. The initial work of the office here was to build a foundation for the league. So we really started to think about what content opportunities we have. We launched an email newsletter um, called Couch Weekly. That is a great, you know, easy way for fans that it's shameless plug available at couchweekly.com. Um, but it's a great, what we try to do is aggregate some of the best stories around the league every week. Um, so to give Americans, you know, and it's very American written, very American centric. Um, so, uh, you know, now that we've got content franchises, we've got more distribution through Couch Weekly, through social. Now it's really time to commercialize the league. Um, I would stay tuned over the next couple of months that we're going to have some, uh, uh, we, we, what we consider are some transformational partnerships to announce that will not just help us from a commercial and revenue standpoint, but also help us gain new fans in the market through some innovative partnerships. So um, we're really poised for growth on the business side in the same way that we are, you know, we've captured growth over on the fan side. Yeah. And I'm sure some of that growth has also come um, with some of the, uh, some of the broadcasts you have over there. I know uh, recently renewing the CBS broadcast deal. Um, we, I think we see this over here in the UK with their, with their Champions League content. It's actually really quite engaging and quite, um, quite different to how the UK do it as well. Just speak a little on how important that CBS broadcast deal, broadcast deal is in being able to reach new audiences in the US. And then also, you also have um, deals with Fox Deportes and Sirius XM deals. Um, how well have they been received um, since being, partner, in being partners with them? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, CBS is an incredibly important partner. You know, we just renewed our, our, um, our rights deal with them for this media rights cycle. You know, to your point, they do an incredible job on the production. Pete Radovich is head of production over there. He's a legend in the industry. The pregame show they do is is incredible. Um, great talent, very insightful analysis of the matches. So we're very, very lucky to have um, CBS as a broadcast par partner. To be clear, CBS includes the CBS Broadcast Network, the CBS um, Sports Network, Galazzo, as well as every match that we have is streamed on Paramount+. Plus. So this season... Really, our priority, our, our priority in this media rights cycle, the priority was scale. So um, we just, it was a major um, milestone for us. We just had the first Serie A match on broadcast television. Um, that was on CBS a couple of weeks ago. It was AC Milan or Parma um, against AC Milan. And they did an incredible pregame show. Pulisic was part of the pregame show. Ibrahimovic was part of the pregame show. There were some Serie A legends. So it was great the way that they really set the stage for a much, much broader audience for the match. Um, so just bringing that broad audience to Serie A as a sampling is a great opportunity for growth for us. Um, and that is definitely part of our strategy is how do we get, how do we use broadcast partners to get scale here in the U.S.? Um, so as you mentioned, you know, we are broadening uh, the way that we look at the market. So previously we worked with CBS only, um, CBS Paramount Plus in English. So this year, Fox Deportes, um, and there's a massive for, you know, those that may not be in the market or follow things closely, um, Liga Mekis does incredibly well in the U.S. They are the number one um, league as far as broadcast ratings here in the market. And so having our matches now available to the broader Spanish language audience through three matches per week on, um, on Fox Deportes, again, great opportunity for us to grow the league. And then, as you mentioned, not everybody's home all the time on weekend, on Saturdays. 
So offering people out of home access through a partnership with SiriusXM and SiriusXM isn't just about streaming the matches. They also do a lot of talk shows and news coverage of football broadly. And so just being in the mix with SiriusXM, again, just gives us a much broader opportunity to expose the league to new potential fans. Yeah, and I guess also the league has also kind of been uh, maximizing its exposure just by nine out of 20 Serie A clubs now having US owners. Um, I'll give a little shameless plug myself. Uh, I was able to speak to the head of marketing, uh, AC Milan, at the top of the year for a feature, and they was talk. she was talking about uh, Tania Moreno, she's called. She was talking about how Redbird Capital are really engaging with the uh, with their US with their US audience in terms of preseason tours and collaborations with with Off White and the New York Yankees, for example. Um, how have they? How have those US owners in the Serie A? How have they helped to support not just the, uh, the clubs domestically in Italy, but also their growth in the US? Yeah, I mean, it's just great for us to have American ownership because it shows the opportunity and trajectory of the league, right? Americans would be investing if we were not we weren't, you know, on our way to continued growth and you know sustained growth over time. You know, what's been really fun, and obviously, you know, as you say, AC Milan and Redbird do an incredible job of marketing. Um, they're massive, they're smart, they're strategic about their marketing, they're investing in the market. But clubs like Roma, um, Fiorentina also have American owners and you know are, are continuing to um, do more in this market. And we are here to support them and do anything we can um, to help them break into the market. Um, but also what's been really fun and interesting is how some of the smaller and medium-sized clubs are taking on the market. Bologna, for instance, not an American owner, but a Canadian owner. So part of, part of our landmass um, so, you know, they actually last season invested in the market. They brought a couple of their commercial and promotional execs over. Um, we did a watch party with them in the office. They had a number of commercial meetings. And then, you know, if you look at all the, you look at the three newly promoted clubs, Parma and Venezia are both U.S. owned. Um, and then Como, though they're owned in Asia, they have a, they have a significant American connection. And so, you know, Across the league, big clubs, small clubs, America is a big part of their plans. Um, and it's great to see kind of the different approaches that they're taking to breaking the market. Yeah, I mean, even you mentioned Venezia there. I think uh, I think it's working quite well in, even in the uh, the music industry now because Drake is an investor now, right, in Venezia? And that's one of our pillars, this connection to Italian fashion. So to see them do so much in fashion broadly, but specifically with their shirts uh, is, is great. It's really smart and strategic the way they're thinking about kind of taking on the market in different ways. Yeah, definitely. Some of those kits are uh, really, really nice. Um, we, so we just mentioned in there a bit of the American sprinkle onto some of these, onto some of these um, Italian clubs. Um, what more can uh, Serie A, but not just Serie A, but other European football leagues learn from the US sports model when it comes to sponsorship and marketing? Because I know the US sporting model is very, you know, focused and they, they kind of drive sponsorship to, to the max, right? Yep, absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. I think one of the things that I've been, um, you know, really interested in is, you know, obviously a lot of international or European um, clubs are coming and leagues are coming here to the U.S. It's been interesting to see how the American leagues are also exporting their product internationally as well. I mean, it's cliche to say it, it's at this point, but kind of given global distribution of content uh, and kind of the ubiquity of your travel being relatively easy, we are truly in a global marketplace. And so, you know, we could all learn from each other. And we've had conversations with all the different leagues here in the U.S. about, you know, thinking about, you know, how to potentially work together or if nothing else, just exchanging, um, you know, learnings as we, you know, work together to kind of grow our respective sports around the world. Um, you know, I think the biggest lesson that we can take from, you know, and, and again, you said it, Callum, was, commercialization. So, you know, how do we do commercial in a way that's very organic to the sport um, is additive to fans experience and not disruptive. And I think the American sports have done a good job of that. So a lot of what I look at is how do we think about commercializing this league in this market in the same way that the, the traditional American sports have, and what can we learn from them and you know, deploy in this market? Yeah. And also not alienating the the core fan base as well, keeping them relatively localized and to the product still at heart, right? 100%. And that's a balance that we have to kind of manage and 
you know, be very thoughtful and methodical about our approach. Definitely, definitely. Well, um, lastly, Andy, uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to, uh, just on, on a little lighter note, is there any, what you're looking forward to this uh, this upcoming Serie A season? We're only a couple of games in. Is uh, Arenta going to retain for the third, third year in a row? And are there any teams or players you, that the Americans should be uh, most excited to watch this season? Yeah, this season, I mean, first of all, to be very clear, I love all 20 teams equally. <laughs> um, they're all my children. Yeah. Um, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But, but in all seriousness, you know, what I tend to follow is um, how are the U.S. men's national team players doing? So you know, we have players across the league and multiple teams. So it's always fun to catch up with their performance and see how that, again, impacts kind of their perception and how they play on the field, you know, when they are part of the national team. And obviously having a now, you know, one of arguably the best coaches in the world with Pochettino now here. I think it really will rise the profile of the U.S. men's national team, which I think, again, creates advantage for Serie A. Um, but there's really compelling narratives to follow around the league. Like, can Tiago Mato's uh, success at at, uh, at Juve continue, right? A lot of pressure on him, but they're a different team this year than they were last year. Look what he did, did with Bologna. Atalanta, after winning the Europa League, uh, defeating, surprising, I think, everyone... Uh, outside of Serie A, uh, by beating uh, Bayern Leverkusen, can they continue their success in Europe after you know having a you know, transfer window where you know their players were in high demand? Um, Napoli now with Conte uh, and Lukaku, can they rebound from their Scudetto Scudetto winner winning ways just a couple of years ago? So super interesting storylines to follow all around the league. Um, and so, you know, I really pay attention to what are the different, you know, again, not being a fan of any specific team, looking, you know, broadly at what are the most interesting stories. And again, shameless plug time, but that's what we do with Calcio Weekly, where we really want to make fans understand all the different narratives across the league. So if they're interested in the league, if they're interested in a team, it's a good way to, to follow us. So whether it be Calcio Weekly, um, we're on Instagram at um, the... Um, uh, handle is uh, Serie A underscore North America um, constantly posting news and highlights and updates around the league there so we're trying to make it easier for people to follow um, and just be able to connect to all those different narratives around the league um, I'm sure we can, uh, we can we can put the link in the uh, YouTube description box below for you Andy uh, I'm sure we can do that for you but no Andy really appreciate you uh, taking the time out to speak with me today uh, I hope um, I hope that the uh, Serie A season goes well for you in the US. Um, like you said, it's expected to be quite one of the more entertaining ones over the past co uh, couple of years. So, yeah, really looking forward to see what uh, what more movements you do in the US market. And yeah, just thank you for your time and uh, all the best. Great. Well, thanks, Dal. Thanks for having us. It's it's always great to have an opportunity to talk about the league and the work we're doing in this market. So, appreciate you having us on. And we're, as I get as I said, things are moving fast. And we're going to have more and more to say over the next uh, you know, few months. So would love to have the opportunity to update you at some time in the near future. But again, thank you for this opportunity. And you guys keep doing the great work that you're doing. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Andy.